and welcome to the Glacially Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, and swearing. Of course, I am Nick Cameron of Glacially Musical. I am joined by my good friend and co-host, a man who always stands up, a man who always says, I didn't hear no bell, Keeve Chakas. How are we doing today, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you? I, mean, I told you. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't that wasn't know what one. to expect there. That was wild. Um, All right. I Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is, of course, the last episode of Baroness. This is gold and gray. I've already started drinking, so yeah. It has been a messed up week. I have gotten like six hours of sleep total uh, leading up to this. So yeah, I apologize for that. I'm going to beer check. This week, I am rocking Sierra Nevada Little Big Thing Imperial IPA, dropping the finger fudge down the middle. Just uh, realized I didn't give the logistics. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Oh, no, we're doing that again. Okay, we're going to have to just go to... Oh, balls. We're going to have to go to crappy video for me. Oh, no, that's not. That's even worse. Almost there. Mm, getting closer. Professional as hell. Uh, beer metal swearing and apparently crappy video this week. I apologize, but it is what it is. So uh, here's how we do. We greet, we beer, we vinyl, we shirt, we do that business. How uh, so... And I just realized I did not grab my records for this week. So I'm just going to scoot forward a little bit. And can you see me? I mean, yeah, but it's okay. Oh, crap. That's yeah, not I cool. like seeing your hip in your pajamas. All right. I, I, yes, yes, I'm wearing PJs because I'm awesome. So you poured sorry, your beer. Sorry, sorry. Let's, let's, let's pick it up. Dropped it and pick it up like it's hot. You poured your beer. Got uh, Sierra Nevada, little big thing, Imperial IPA. Wife picked this up for me on the way home. It is 9%. It is malty and hoppy as hell. It is perfection. Mm, nice. I have yeah. I have a beer I have never had before. Uh, also purchased at Trader Joe's. This is Swami's India Pale Ale from Pizza Port Brewing. I don't believe I've ever had this. I've had other Pizza Port brewing beers but not this one and because i'm a contrarian i'm gonna pour this into my tumbler that you will not be able to appreciate the finger fudge pour because i went to heavy psych sounds <laughs> nick, nick and i haven't recorded in a few weeks here comes the pop hold on the pop you won't hear probably but how to do it that is the greatest noise canceling microphone it is man ever the fine microphones i'm back on my fine my official for fine, but here's the finger fudge pour into the tumbler, which was part of the festival. So Nick and I haven't recorded in a few weeks. We've had some life stuff go on. And um, as I don't actually accident, almost poured it over, didn't, lucky. And uh, went to the Heavy Psych Sounds Doom Festival here, been to a bunch of shows. I exhausted myself. I also am running on Little Sleep. It's kind of funny. The last time we met and recorded, we were both doing spectacular. And now we're both like tired. I did have a big presentation today at work that went stellar. So it was worth the sacrifice of my rest and well-being. And I have uh, uh, been doing 3.30 coffees all week. Oh, yeah. I, I did a coffee at midnight last night to stay up to polish off my deck because I, I come from this background where it's like when you have a presentation to give. You got to know it like the back of your hand so you don't even use the presentation. You just kind of go. Completely, so, completely. But what's the best part about a 3.30 coffee? Uh, 7.30 beer. I was going to say 8 p.m. poo. Whoa. Anyway, cheers, my friend. It cheers, has been buddy. a minute. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. Uh, we It was very recalcitrant in our last uh, our last pod, but, you know, don't trigger me and mention bands I hate. But also, I did miss your face. Oh, everything's and, my fault. Wow. It's always your fault. I mean, I'm Fair enough. Too. This is my journey in life. But yeah, I'm happy to have, it is the happiest hour on the podcasting interwebs, and I'm glad to share it with you, my friend. Same, same, same. It is the podcast happy, it's the YouTube happy hour. So I'm going to vinyl check real quick. I'm going to drop a deuce because we yeah. talked about poop, and that's what I grabbed. Uh, first off, yeah, I'm gonna save that for a second. You're gonna Keefe's gonna drop a deuce when he sees number two, not this one. Number one is the cars, their self-titled debut, 
which uh, I apologize because I got the crappy, I, my good, uh, my HD camera went funky, so it's now all goofiness. But this is a great record, and I have been getting way more into the new way, finally digging it more than just talking heads burning down the house. And how can you not love the cars? Good times roll. My best friend's girl. Just what I needed. If you're not already interested, I question all of your life choices. Number two, one I finally picked up. One we almost did on the podcast, you and I. Thin Lizzy, Black Rose. And a good picture, good good cover. This has got Gary Moore on lead guitar. So if there's ever anything in this world more that you needed, you do have no idea how much you need Phil Linet on vocals and bass, coupled with Gary Moore on lead guitar. This record is amazing. It was just Gary Moore's birthday. Uh, rest in power to Gary. Uh, no notes. A Rose and Dubin. Black Rose is wonderful. And uh, you have not been as Irish as you could possibly be if you listen to the Black Rose album on the jukebox in the Black Rose bar in Boston. That's about as Irish as you can get without being Irish. I watched Dairy Girls. Does that not count? Might be good. Um, Yeah, fantastic. Cars are fantastic. Love that record. Iconic album photo and incredible. Elliot Easton. We Maybe we should do the cars. I don't know. We we should. We should run... A uh, very un- somehow an underrated band, but an incredible band. I don't know. Um, tons of. I'd well, say Metallica's underrated, but no, no, I I would because they're just that great. Well, what you got for me this we week? Have a lot of Metallica news to check on the show today. I have a very cool album to check today. I'm still back on my shit. So I mentioned I went to the Heavy Psych Sounds Festival. And it's I've really been like living very, you know, close to the vest for a long time and not buying anything, occasional vinyls notwithstanding. But I went to the festival and I predicted that I was going to have a hard time protecting my money. It was all cash, weirdly, at the festival. Ooh, really? It should have deterred me from buying anything. But I went to the ATM like a dumbass in Vegas and took out plenty of money and I bought... Yeah, seven or eight vinyls at the festival. I went to the punk pop-up store and bought a bunch of vinyls the day before. And then I got a box of vinyl. If you watch the Ghost Cult Weekly Ritual, I unboxed an entire box of music, including vinyl from Salt of the Earth Records. So I have a ton of vinyl to check in the future. And as I said to you off air, I'm very tempted to do a Just Heavy Psych Sounds Do Metal check album check episode for me similar to the I, look i've yeah. done two ultra vinyl checks yeah i'm due for one you're due you're due step it I'm up due. but today's today's vinyl check is none of those today i'm still in order of the ones i got before the festivals and the things so i have the debut album from goat snake repressed remastered from gimme metal which we may finally soon embark on our gimme metal subscription journey we'll see remind me in a few days and i'll get my credit card and and i'll get my credit card into the machine yep so goat snake this came on a gorgeous if you don't know goat snake is also Stephen o'malley and greg anderson of sun as well as southern lord records if i'm not mistaken and so this came on a gorgeous gimme metal exclusive translucent purple you know how i feel about the perps love the purples almost fuchsia not sure speaking of which coronation day coming up soon oh is that something i should care about the king no no one should care but i do oh are you are you royal files or whatever the uh... i wasn't last year uh we have a weird world the mm-hmm. former president is indicted a new king is being crowned and the president's not going. He's not going anywhere, but like, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, just the one? Let's keep it on track. Just the one for me. Shirt check time. Gonna rock. I'm rocking Pink Floyd Animals. My child is wearing her Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon, and I gatekept her. I'll admit it. 
I was being I was being silly, being silly. She's wearing her dark side. And I'm like, you don't even like Pink Floyd. She's like, yes, I do. You just make me sick of it. Oof. Where's I mean, your wife's Pink Floyd shirt? Or your cat's? No, mm, no. I'm cat's going to wear one first. Then, oh, you no. Know, cats are over shirts. Oh, no. But uh, you're going to be so wearing like, the cat fur first. Um, so I'm so like, th- who's your favorite Pink Floyd? It's like, what? Shut what up. are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, the Mrs. Cameron. No, I, that was the kid. That was oh, that's the kid. a kid. Oh, forget it then. I, I am wearing my Sisters in Christ shirt. You saw me unbox a vinyl from them not long ago. That is the record company and merch company from New Orleans that puts out the records from Thou. And so this is their, I, I they were having kind of like a fundraising Bandcamp Friday thing. And it was 20 bucks in my size. Look at this cool Griffin image. And, uh, you know, very contrary with the Sisters in Christ, which I have no affiliation to at all. I don't know what the shit that is, but like it's cool. And it's probably very, you know, New Orleans is full of religious imagery and stuff. Yet its reputation is a heathen hedonistic capital. Uh, Very cool. Very cool stuff. And I got my uh, Toxic Holocaust hat. You see me in all the time. So last week, if you watch the YouTube, I looked very bald, which was awesome. So people who are on the other side of the video might want to mention that when I look terrible, would appreciate that. I don't remember I don't... you looking bald, but again, you don't wear hats. Maybe your hair was very flat that day. I don't no, I, I wear hats pretty much significantly. Just we did not... the chaser like a while ago. I mean, the weather might have been different. I know, that was like December, but mm-hmm. actually no, it was like February. February. Yeah. Well, anyway, not the point. I'm just being, uh, being a jerk. Uh, I have one bit of news, which is followed up by the 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 the, the denouement of the news. Mm. So as we sit, as we stand, as we talk, as we question all of our life choices and how many Kiss records we have purchased, Ace Frehley, the man, the myth, the legend, the smartest man in his own mind. Went on the Eddie Trunk show recently, as of a week ago, as we record this. And he was upset at Paul Stanley saying in a Howard Stern interview, that's how low we have sunk. I am doing news of an ace reaction to a Paul interview on Howard Flippin' Stern, who is just useless. I'm sorry. He's a shock jock. They're useless. It, it is what it is. So Paul said that we couldn't use the original lineup at the Hall of Fame or they'd be calling us piss. Now, naturally, the fact that Paul can't sing is why they didn't do it. Period. Full stop. Because no matter how much Paul Stanley, no matter how much Gene Simmons, no matter how much they say the Rolling Stone sucks. Their peers don't matter. We play for the fans. We don't play for the critics. Uh, to quote every rock star who's getting bad reviews, as wonderfully described in Almost Famous. Uh, Paul, no, Paul Stanley has always wanted that wonderful feeling, that twiggle on the berries, all of that the uh, that only a quality critical review can bring him. Obviously, should he go on stage, he would have laid bare how terrible he has been for the past 15 years. So he did not do that. So instead, in true Kiss fashion, he blames Ace and Peter. Because, of course, it's Ace and Peter's fault that he can't sing somehow. Well, Ace heard that interview or somebody told him about the interview. So he goes on Eddie Trunk and he talks about a 120 page manuscript of all the words and all the details and all the horrible things that Kiss has done. And he is ready to ruin their careers unless he gets an apology. All right. You know what? That is uh, seventh grade stupidity to begin with. Yeah, did but you guys Paul... have slam books when you were in junior high school? Because we did. It's some childish stuff. Um... Oh, hang on, hang on. We got more. Oh, no. Oh, there's... I was really hoping that was it. No, there's two more parts. Oh, no. The second part is short. Oh, Paul no. Stanley calls him about an hour after the show airs. And he says, I'm not apologizing. Fuck you. Click. 
So the seven days passes and Ace is going to drop. I cursed right there, but go ahead. We were on a good streak. Go ahead. I'm quoting. It's, it's journalistic integrity. Sorry. So seven days later, Ace Fraley goes back on the Andy Trunk show to drop the news. He was advised not to do so. So, Can I also, uh, real quick, and I will stop. Oh. Lots of anti Semitism from Ace during both of these interviews. So, yeah, awesome. He's half Jewish. It's stupid. Um, is he half Jewish? 100% half Jewish or 50%. So, here's, here's why this is how. Like, what I'm more interested in is the why than the what. And so, like, I'll say this, like, Stern at this point is an institution and it is a big deal. Like Metallica no, unveiled know, the black in 2020 on his show. So like, and they announced they're going on Howard Stern next week for 72 of course, seasons. Of course they are. So, and they're going to probably play like new song or something. So like for the first time or something. So like, you know, Stern, right. now you may not like him, but he is kind of a, no, no, I'm, I'm an institution. It's a big deal to get on his show. I apologize. Paul, Legitimately teasing. I know so, what, how big he is. Yeah. So Paul and Gene, it's it's a foregone conclusion. The kiss is kiss as we know it now is ending at the end of the year. F- at least as a touring entity, will they do a whole uh, kiss Vegas as we re- know it? Yes, Vegas residency, perhaps. They say there's going to be no more cruises. I wouldn't. They make so much money on those things. I can't imagine they wouldn't do one more with the res- But like, yeah. So like, there's no chance that Peter and Ace are going to be welcome to come out, especially Correct. not in makeup. And the other Correct. thing is, like, Kiss for one song is useless. Let's just be real. Or Medley, there's no value. They've done Correct. that. They're not doing MTV, whatever. There's no value. And Kiss's whole thing is the whole thing. Kiss is a rotisserie chicken. It's a, a rotisserie burrito. chicken leg alone is delicious, but it's just a leg. And Kiss is the whole chicken in the Correct. with the bag of Hawaiian rolls and the mash on the side and the mac and cheese and the potato salad. So... You know, Ace is very vindictive and angry. They have talked a lot of mess on him, rightfully so. Also, you could not even, you know, Ace is doing pretty well. He's got money. He never needs to work again, I think. Same with Peter. Peter's much older. Never needs to work again, I imagine. But you could not possibly contend with getting sued by Gene and Paul. So Ace's people advised him not to because there's nothing. And even if he has something, a bombshell or whatever, there's nothing you could say. That would convince me that Gene and Paul are worse people than I already believe they are. And I love them. So that's correct. me. Imagine most other fans. They don't care. They don't care. Uh, correct. I would imagine that. Well, one of the things I saw online was if there is something that Ace knows that's so awful that would bring them down. He looked at it and walked away when it happened. He, if he had to be an eyewitness or something he knows about, he's kept quiet about it for a long time. It's going to make him look equally bad. And I guarantee you, 100%. Gene, and, Gene and Paul can ride off into the sunset at any point now and never work again. And and Ace, I hope he never has to work again, but he clearly continues to work. So if he wants to have another 10 years in his life and career or 15 years, he better not throw it away. So. I, I think this is a red herring. There's nothing. This is a I, I agree there is nothing. I would mm-hmm. say it's like in The Matrix 4,000, based on my numbering. I've never seen, whoa, I've never seen machines attack another machine. Well, that's scarcity. And right now, Ace Fraley has told himself for the past five years there will be an end of the road payday one way or another. And now he just realized, oh, there's no end of the road payday for Ace. So what can I do to make that happen? I don't think Ace wants to work. I think Ace has to work. He, I've watched the videos. I've seen him in concert. He is very lackadaisical. He is very disinterested on stage, apparently, to me. So I believe, and I mean, he's in his 70s. For the love of God, if I'm working in my 70s, shoot me. So, and I will stop. I mean, other than your very successful wife and your potential superstar child, we're all going to be working in our 70s. This world is screwed. 
Uh, there is no retirement age anymore. Social Security is gone, been gambled away by our leaders. So mm-hmm. I don't know what you're, you know, unless you've got a savings, I don't know about, you, you know, you're spending it on vinyl, your retirement right now. So like, what, what, what vinyl? Right. <clears throat> um, Two quick news things, because we haven't talked in a minute, and I'll try to be brief to get this show on the road and finish the Baroness series. Um, I'm going again. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Never mind. So, um, Pink Floyd. We have a Pink Floyd episode coming up. Pink Floyd released their Dark Side of the Moon box set, their Dark Side of the Moon live album. Nick is still gone. Keep going, keep going. And so we we got an announcement from the band that there are global celebrations planned to continue celebrating Dark Side, all while Roger and David hate each other and Roger's forthcoming Dark Side re-recording, reimagining is coming. But I, I heard a little bit of that, and it was terrible. They're doing well. I don't know. I I like the reimagining thing he did from the wall that I like the Hey You. I thought it was wonderful. But like, if it's along those lines, I'm down. Again, if it's just some petty attempt to make his fans only listen to his dark side in the future, that's just dumb. He gets paid no matter what from the original recording. It's it's his writing and playing. It's his record as well. The most it's hysterical no thing sense. would be is if you liked it and I didn't. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, I don't care what Nick Mason thinks about it. I listened to some of it, and I thought it was wonderful. Shut up, dude. Don't pick a side right now. Um, yeah, just just, just play uh, Sausage Bowl Secrets. And yeah, just say, nothing, just say nothing. Um, please come back to America, because I didn't get to see that tour. But So, Same. Pink Floyd Celebrations, uh, there's some kind of laser show animation to Dark Side going to go through planetariums and movie theaters all through the country. They're going to be Global, we have a planetarium. Global word, global listening events, and all kinds of fun things. So keep tuned to your. Maybe I'll link that in the description to the post on pinkfloyd.com where people can find their so- celebration. I believe the Empire State Building is going to get lit up in a prism. Oh, um, nice! One day soon. So very cool. Pink Floyd news check done. Second news check is so we're covering all the Kiss, Pink Floyd, and of course Metallica. So we are about one. When you're listening to this, we are about one week out from the brand new Metallica, the first new Metallica to come out while Nick and I are. You have just made my pants tight. Yes. Nick just went from six to midnight. And so. And back to six. So many things, so many things to unpack going on with Metallica, but we've gotten a bunch of singles, lyric videos in eight languages, multiple times, another music video, James unboxed the vinyl and everything. And the CDs and other things, uh, they're doing interview series. They're going to be on Stern. There's the global movie event next week I'm going to go to. So lots of fun things to unpack. And uh, the and also the first date of their world tour is approaching. Their next two years of touring kicks off in a few weeks. So all kinds of things happening in the Metallic camp. And uh, very funny. Here's the funny part. Lars, who's doing a lot of press, of course, confess that he does actually read online criticism of the band and himself and that he works really hard every day to not regress further than he already has as a player and he said to revolver today as we record this he thinks metallica can get 10 more years which is what i said not too long ago on this podcast and you were like i'm not sure maybe they'll get like one more album out after this one maybe not um no i I, i'm i'm Thank you for saying nice things. That is not true. What I said was the next album was the last album. Well, is that next album 72 seasons or the one? Yes. Yes. Well, 72 seasons was a, was a a surprise drop. We learned in November. Right. They, but they recorded it like with no fanfare or anything, which is wild. And, um, well, they've got their own studios. They've got their own plants. They've got their own machines. I mean, they can... But they kept it quiet. That's my point. They kept it quiet. So it is not so much a surprise drop of the whole album as much as it's a... So it was a surprise to us that they had a record going. Literally the day before that announcement, I had done a podcast for Ghost Cult where I talked to the number one Metallica fan I know, and I know several who are bigger than we are, as much as we are big fans. And she is very connected to the fan club and definitely has her ear to the ground and would know if there was a leak or anything. 
She gets the So What magazine. She's literally inside the con inside the decision curve. She's inside the knowledge of the deepest fan base. And she was like, nah, there's no record coming. Not for a year at least, if not more. And then boom, yeah, the when, next day, here's a record. Here's Lux yeah, when What was that? What was the first song? Oh, Lux Eterna. Yeah. When that dropped, it was like, holy hell, this not only is this great. It's a surprise. Oh, there's a tour. They're coming to St. Louis. I've yeah. got tickets. So the album's the showing things. up on what on, on we are nine days away from me finger fudging myself with that record. Mm. And then Keefe has to talk to me that same day. Yeah, I'm good gonna, luck, Keefe. I'm gonna have it too. I hope mine comes first, just as a continuous competition. <gasps> Why? Because Why? It good or irritates you. You okay, definitely fair. ordered yours before me. I guarantee you mine's going to come first and I'm going to gloat about it. Um, anyway. Well, at least, at least this won't have numbers on it. So you can have a lower one for a later order that shows up first. That's also true. Uh, so anywho, Metallica, everything. Pink Floyd, everything. Kiss sometimes. And uh, that's the news. We have vinyl check, beer check, shirt check, news checked. So what's left? All right. Let me, say, if you don't mind, I'm going to set the table. You always do a the greatest job ever of anybody alive. So go for it. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So last we, la, when last we spoke, we discussed Baroness's Purple, their fourth record, not including the one, two, and the semi-three, the EP. So we are seeing a strong evolution of this band. But it's the kind of evolution that only a fan is going to see. And when I went from yellow and green, which was my get on point to purple, purple was my get off point. I listened to purple. I purchased purple because this was when they weren't repressing modern records. They weren't doing second presses of albums. And frankly, purple reminded me far too much of yellow and green than it should have and as baroness is the kind of band that grows moves and shutters its way forward that put me off going back however yes oh my god i missed the mark on that one but in my personal defense i didn't have yellow and green on vinyl at that point and you know i'm selling my cds because i don't listen to them I'm selling CDs that I'll never be able to get again because I don't listen to them. They mean nothing to me at this point. It is just what sits behind me that I listen to in terms of getting my musical delivery, my deliciousness. So I had no interest in Baroness from 2017 forward. And I heard Keefe, before we were friends to speak of, discussing Gold and Gray on a podcast of whose name I don't recall and don't care to recall. And Keefe said how amazing that record was. So I went back and checked it out. I think it was 2019, the year of at the time. It was it was new but not brand new. The, the bloom was off the rose, so to speak. But I went back. I went to my local library and I checked out Baroness Golden Green. Yes, I ripped it, but I did not steal it because then I bought the vinyl. So up here in that vicinity is where it is, along with purple and yellow and green. Now, so if you look at yellow and green as the departure project, they stopped being this heavy band. They stopped being this metal band and they became this other thing. This Savannah, Georgia, Caius sort of thing. Then they go into purple and purple is even different from that. And then purple between blue to red to purple. Yeah, I'm sorry. Blue to red, yellow and green to purple to golden gray. Each week they're parting out members. After, you know, between red and yellow and green, they're parting out the bass player. John is going in, re recording everything, making it his way. Then they have the wreck, the rhythm section drops out, the new rhythm section drops in. And we have local St. Louis and Nick Jost, 
who I'm wondering if he has anything to do with the Jost family that owns the St. Louis Junior Blues. No idea. Probably because, you know, money. But then after that, they go into the studio, they make purple. So they have a new lineup of purple. I, I apologize. I don't remember the bass player, the, the drummer's name. I'm, I'm sorry. You want to jump so in? Sebastian Thompson is the drummer from the band Trans Am. God bless you Australian and thank you. Australian by way of Brooklyn. Fair enough. Then Pete is the one member that has stayed with John all the way through. Pete goes in, he records Purple, and Purple is the most aptly named Baroness record of all time. It is recorded two years after the wreck. It is recorded a year after a tour where John and Pete are thankful to be alive more than thankful to being on a stage. Now, imagine you're someone who has worked on something. You want to be an athlete. You want to be an artist. You want to be a dramatization, an actor, whatever you want to do, something that's in the public eye. And when you want to be that kind of person, that becomes your all-encompassing world. That becomes your life because you have to work. No matter how good you think you are, there's 7,000 people that are at least as good, if not better. As much as we love King Diamond, as much as we love James Hatfield, as much as we love John Five, there are people that are far better than these people. They just didn't get the chance. As much as you love your favorite hockey player, your favorite baseball player, your favorite football player, there's someone coming behind them that's going to knock them off. So John wasn't thankful to be on stage as much as he was thankful to be alive. So that is a huge difference. He was thankful to be on stage as well, of course. And as I mentioned, the impassioned plea. He goes in, he writes purple. Purple is the bruise, the healing moment. But it's not. It's not a healing moment because all of a sudden, John finds himself on an island. Between 2014 and 2016, it's just John. It goes from the original band to John and Pete. Between 2016 and 2018, now it's just John. Pete calls it a day pete well, leaves the band yeah and like i said i said we kind of touched on this briefly at the end of purple episode where it's been a minute so um, mm-hmm. you know listen back to these things obsessively and take notes like i do but um or i i think it went from just john to to john i think like nick and sebastian come in and he has the confidence and to let them also make their own parts and then pete leaves and gina gleason comes in from philly session guitarist she's been in a bunch of stoner rock bands she played with michael jackson no she was in a black sabbath tribute band a king diamond tribute band. she's an incredible incredible amazing guitarist right and now he feels like he has people for the first time beside pete that could match him talent wise writing wise so he i think what you will find on this new record is what they actually write golden gray as a complete record as a band for the first time since the first record um, because I think even Pete was great and, you know, has some great parts, but I think it's still, it was still always John's band until now. So it's kind and of like, Gina then... is go ahead. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, go ahead. <clears throat> Gina is all of the leads. Yeah. The vast majority of them. He can still play. He plays, you know, he'll share some leads, but she is an, a shreddy superstar guitar player. She's amazing. And she's she... also great live by the way. And an amazing vocalist, as we'll get she to. She really is. Yeah, she really is. So let's, let's, uh, Golden Gray is similar to Yellow and Green, whereas it's two thoughts. However, unlike Golden Green, it is only 60 minutes, which I would call a triple sided LP rather than a double. So I feel like I have the vinyl and it's on two LPs, but it's on, it is, no, it's, it's on three. It's, it's rather long. Um, Mm-hmm. Okay. One. I didn't give myself any credit that I have mine in the mylar and uh, everything Two? today. Yeah. However, then the third one for you for our YouTube fans, you'll see side four. 
for the etching. Yep. Did John do the art on the etching? I bet he did. I would assume. I didn't check. Yeah, but you know, it. Golden Gray is a it's it's like Robert Plant Records. And one of the I things hope not. <laughs> what not touching that? It's like a rubber plant record where it's got A B C etch. Right. Do you know? Oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed. You may not have because we didn't talk about this. I didn't. I don't usually ask permission. I just. I don't. I. I. I ask forgiveness later. I don't ask permission a lot of times in my life. I went ahead and started making playlists on the Glacial Musical Podcast YouTube. So if you missed any of our previous series, Nick's face says he was not aware. We just went ahead and took the liberty. I started making. I talked about doing this in the past, but um, thumbs up, thumbs up. I started making playlists of the old series we've done. And the playlist of all the chasers. So we know that we have some fans that maybe not care for all the bands we've covered, but they like the chaser episodes because they're informative and interesting. You can just listen to all the chasers. Or if that's miss- the problem we run into because yeah. if you miss we- Robert Plant or Black Sabbath or Iron Maiden, you can go back and hear those series now and find the playlists on YouTube that just listen to those. Very cool. We are a heavy metal deep dive historical podcast. Ooh. And it goes historical as late as last week to as early as 1968. Yeah, we've gone all the way back. Uh, but the problem is, is if you don't have an interest in the artist that we're doing for a month. It's, it's, right. But I think that's the best way of doing Se- it. Separately from the other podcast, Nick has the Department of Metal Antiquities with the great Duncan Evans, where they listen to mute records so you don't have to or whatever the oh my god is. this past week was two with rob halford and john Fry. i love that record i think it's great okay i would have loved it uh, and duncan apparently liked it according to his tweets duncan liked it better than i did that's yeah, that, and a friend of mine from from back in the day was actually up for the guitar spot no way before i knew him because okay. he wouldn't have liked me then but no. anyway anyway let so us gold, move yeah, on gold and gray um is announced with the single for Borderline. And unlike Purple, which is released after awards season, this record comes out in June of 2019. And again, recorded, I believe, with the same producer who did Purple, who they like. Mm -hmm. That is um, Dave Fridman, who also works a lot with Flaming Lips. Their albums sound immaculate, even if you don't like the band. Once again, released on the band's own label, Abraxan Hymns. Which is not a vanity label, and I'm sorry. That's quite all right. I'm not going to pick on you. Again. Um, And I think the band played the single live before the album ever came out. They did a co-headlining tour with Deaf Heaven, right as Deaf Heaven was peaking in 2019. Um, And apparently... The artwork was leaked by the app Shazam, according to Wikipedia, which we don't want to say is a, is a source of sources. We don't know this for a fact, but he had this is a he was doing like a puzzle reveal and then somebody Shazam the song and the whole cover came out and he was pissed. Mm. And he was like, it's not called orange. It's gold. That's pretty great. Um, it doesn't look gold, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So let's run down the track by track. And it is a lengthy boy. It is a it, it's boy. yeah, it's seventeen tracks, which is about as many tracks as Yellow and Green with with less time. Right, but I mean, I think we can we can. Yeah, it's a solid hour. We're gonna this. bang through this pretty quick because a lot of yeah. these tracks are instrumentals. Yeah, at least one, five of them. One, two, yeah. three, four. One, mm. two, three, four, five, six. So six of seventeen are instrumental, and I'm so not even just... sure. I'm not even sure the last track's a full song, really. Let's just right. let's just crush tracks right and through, then yeah, right off the bat, I have notes for a change. Hey, look at my notes. I have notes Don't. written on the back of a thing with other notes on it. Listen to um, it three times, including vinyl and digital. So I mean, I've, yeah. I've done it. I've yeah, done my pretty, bit. I listen to this record pretty regularly, anyway, because I love mm-hmm. the band. So the album begins with "Front Toward Enemy." If you are not a military fan or person, "Front Toward Enemy" is usually uh, stamped on the front of landmines. And IEDs mm. in, in America, for America under four minutes, pretty rocking, pretty rocking opener. It's got like a very um, almost like a, a symphony tuning up. This is a thing you alluded to back in the very first record, so maybe it's kind of a circular cycle thing. The John back. loves the overture. He does. He really does. And if you listen to as, and we're going to do a Broadway series at some point. If you listen to the Broadway musicals as Keefe and I do, because we're nerds and love just music in general 
we're we're music lovers more than metalheads. But if you're a metalhead, you're you're nobody trusts you for anything else. So whatever. But there's always that tune up, and every Baroness record starts off with this song, whether it's the yellow theme, the green theme, the red theme, the blue theme, or this. It's it's a tone setter, you know. It, it's like that. It's in in this record. It's like when you have two rival hockey teams. You know, I remember a game where I went to a blues game. I was in the front row. My stepdad got the tickets. I don't like front row, but there was a fight. Dan Hino drops the gloves against Chicago, St. Louis and Chicago, the classic angry matchup. The next day we read the interview and he says, I looked at him and I said, you want to set the tone? Let's go. That's where we are. Okay. Fair enough. Great song. Honestly, if it was less catchy and more metal, it would almost be the riffs are very angular and would almost be a Dillinger Escape Plan math rock song. But because it's not distorted and because it's got a very catchy, you know, very cool chorus, it's it's more like a, a proggy rock song than anything else. Almost like a Coheed and Cambria song with better singing, to be honest. And I want to disagree. Okay. I want to. Not going to. You could though. You could. But no, I no, I can't. Okay. I would have to disagree first. To quote to quote Beavis talking about corn. One is even reminded of Laurie Anderson and Carlos. Ah. Um moving on. I'm already gone. I'm already gone as the second track. And is a little more yellow and green, right? Than purple. Completely agree rockin'. with that. Very rocking, but very it's it's yellow, yellow and green, but metal. A little more metal, yeah. I like it. Again, under four minutes. Just about the right amount of time for a song. Right into it. No, no long tracks on this record. Not really, no. Not, not at all. Um, Seasons is the third track, and I have written in my notes, more progressive rocking. That's what my notes say. It, it's... I don't remember this one. I'm trying to come up with a thing to make me look good, but I got nothing. So no moving on, Seven's instrumental, and they don't have any ex- exceedingly long instrumentals in this record. They're all short. What I love about this one, it's 17 tracks. Six minutes is as long as it goes. Mm. And so they, they're creating timely bites. Love it. I'm going to throw something out to you and You tell me after we've covered a few more of these things. I think, interestingly enough, these interludes, this is the record where there's the least diversity in them. They all kind of sound a little bit the same to me for the first time ever. They're not that different uniformly. I don't know. The album or the interludes? The interludes. The instrumental tracks that all kind of have a thread, but not so much a thread, but just kind of a sameness. That's just the first time ever for the band. Give her, give her. Uh, one of the best tracks on the record is the fifth track, Tourniquet. Great Love lyrics, it. great singing, great riffs. No notes. Mm. Anchor's Lament, uh, a shorty instrumental interlude. No strong feelings. No strong feelings. Uh, Throw Me an Anchor, there's that tie together that, that they were so famous for in their early records, lo- you know, linking things thematically and lyrically. Throw Me an Anchor, solid, good rock song. Um, and, uh, again, another proggy heavy rock song, not metal. It's amazing how proggy they are without being proggy. They have found, they they found a code that no one else has found. Actually, this is really interesting. I mean, you could make a case that John's guitar on the, on purple and gold and gray have a lot in common with Steve Howe of Yes and Robert Fripp. I know that you're not a huge Yes person, but I am. And I got like three records. Yes, I mean, is that not enough? Yes was, well, you you slagged them on the pod before. Yes is a band. <laughs> I, mean, I don't remember. Did, I mean, I might Oh, have, yeah, you, I you were pretty ins- I suggested doing a Yes run and you scoffed at me. So I took Wow. I, you know what? Again. I apologize. I take it back. We can oh, do a well, Yes run. Very snarky sometimes. That's, so am I. Yeah. Um, but well, you know what? Sometimes you bring it out of me. That's also true. I'm a bastard, let's be honest. Steve Howe is a guitar player. He's really not playing rock. He's really playing jazz guitar and flamenco and other things, similar to Alex Lifeson. He's really not playing heavy rock. He's really incidentally in a heavy rock band at times because the drums and bass are so thundering and there's synthesizers. 
But Steve he Howe, also played the clap. He, I know he played the clap. I'm sorry. I, that will loved, never stop being funny to me. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, it was always the highlight of every Yes show I've ever seen, just about. Uh, and I watched Almost Famous yesterday. And of <sighs> course, watch and, it again. and you and I is, well, we should do a watch through of that together and like record it. I think Great great chaser. Maybe when we're together in fair. person later fair, this fair, year. Fair. So moving right along, Anchor's Lament, throw me an anchor. I'd do anything. This is probably, mm, I don't want to say it's a low point of the album, but it's not a song I feel super strongly about. Uh, yeah, it does it, remind it's... me, it does, I do have in my notes, Jeff Buckley or Elliot Smith like. So it's it, very it doesn't. Rock. The thing about this record is there's a lot to quote Keefe abject bangers. There's a handful of super bangers, and then everything else is just kind of okay, which is the first time ever for me. And it's not a knock on the album because it's an excellent album, but I think there's just some interesting. I think they went so long. If you take the five instrumentals out, then you have a 12 track album. If you throw out the four songs that are meh, it's now an eight track album, which is more like what they've been doing. So, so purple. Per, basically purple. So, okay. Um, right. Blankets of Ash, another instrumental I don't feel strongly about. It's, it's, look, I'm not Duncan Evans. I can't give you eight minutes on a one minute instrumental. He could, though. He's so great. He um, always does. He he's go read his, the... his album reviews for Ghost Cult are just. He talks the Blankets. longest about the shortest little instrumentals. Mm. It's, it's actually kind of annoying. Anyway, moving well, on. He finds the passion. Oh, he does. He does. So uh, Emmett, well, Radiating Light. Yeah, later in the record, these songs, pick, like I don't want to say there's a soft underbelly in the middle there, but this part of the record I really like. So I really like this Emmett song. You know, if I'm being honest, side one and side three are amazing. And maybe we two? Maybe we didn't need side two as much. Could be. Emmett, oh. excellent song. Uh, yeah, I'll give you, give followed you. Followed up by another full-length track, Cold-Blooded Angels. It's just some fantastic guitar. Nice guys. to have two tracks in a row that are full tracks. Yeah, full tracks, no breaks. And also So let's very, uh what's what's next? Well, hold on, because I'm gonna just say Cold Blooded Angels, a very strong vocal. His vocals on this are terrific. This um, is each record, you know, and I've talked about John's vocals this entire run. Every record, John sounds better than the previous. If and I have not on made there, that clear. Gene yes. is on here with uh, harmony vocals as well. And she might have even written correct. some lyrics to some of these songs. So she's really contributing as a writer. The, again, he really came full circle. The band on Red and those first couple of EPs and splits was writing as a whole band with John Leedy. Then slowly mm -hmm. over records and records, it becomes just John's band. And mm -hmm. now he has come full circle. I think once Pete left and he had in... Sebastian and Nick, who he trusts and respects, bringing in Gina as an equal, made it a whole band again. Correct, and I, I think very similar I don't think to John uh, wants a solo project. No, he would do one if he wanted to do a solo record. He'd just do one, and right. he, he might, doesn't need. It he wouldn't be Baroness; it'd be John Baroness Baisley. Yeah, it'd be John Dyer Baisley and whatever, and he could do one. I think he could. He's played solo shows where he's completely covers could. and things, and that's I. I if you're going to be a band, you should be a band. Mm, a I band guess. is not one person. A band is at least two. And then we have a very strong finish, in my opinion, to this record. Crooked Mile, instrumental, short and sweet. Eh. Broken Halo, powerhouse track. Mm -hmm. Another short, in, uh, not so short instrumental, Can, Obscu uh, can Oscura. Not obscura. I want to say the obscura. The hell does that even mean? And obscura. Don't know. Maybe it's Latin. Somebody help us out. It's actually pretty good. Probably the best instrumental on the record. Besides sevens. Yeah, and a then, lot of the instrumentals on this record not really necessary. Yeah, well, well. If I'm being honest. If I'm yeah, being that's honest. fair. In past records, the instrumentals have always set up the next track musically, and these don't. They definitely no, live they don't. They're they commercials. Alone. They live alone. Right. But... Possibly the best song on the entire album and was the first single is Borderlines. It's six minutes plus, doesn't feel long, feels like it's over quick, feels like I wish it went on 10 more minutes. Really reminds me of late era Zeppelin. If it, I could show my ass a little, this is the acoustic track with Gina singing the big serious backups, yes? Nope, it's a pretty fucking song. You have it Sorry. Wrong. 
That's okay. Um, wow. Whatever that one was, yeah. loved it. Yeah, I think you're thinking of I'd Do Anything. But Borderlines is a powerhouse song and has a very cool, like I said, it's a late era Zeppelin, got almost a Zeppelin coda, no pun intended, on the end of it, where they break into like a different little jam. And they used to jam that part live for like a few more minutes. That's a fantastic song. Was a single, was a vinyl single, incredible chorus. Just I don't know what it's about, but it's amazing. I don't uh, know what any song he's ever written is about. <laughs> As we discussed, his obtuse lyrics. Assault on East Falls. I don't know what why he's assaulting the East Falls, but that's the final instrumental. And then, yeah. like I said, the final closing tracks, much more like a soundtracky. End credits track Pale Sun. There are there's singing on it, but it's ostensibly another one of these interlude tracks as a closer. Um, but it's a very strong record. If you just take it again on the strength of the those first three, Tourniquet, Throw Me an Anchor, Emmett Radiating Light, Cold Blooded Angels, and Borderlines, those are all bangers. I completely and so agree. I think there's there's a few like I don't want to say weak, but a few low moments on the record or not as strong. So, you know, for me, this it, record's a B-tier record, but still their B-tier is better than most bands' A effort. Okay, fair. I will say this much. None of this is bad. It's It never rises to bad. It never rises to offensive. It does lower to I don't need this. The six instrumental tracks is a bit much. And... This is, I think, one of those cases because, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty pretty well on record with what I'm about to say. 45 or 65 to 70. Don't give me that middle, you know, don't, don't give me that middle. I couldn't, I couldn't kill my children. I'm not as good as, oh shit, what's his name? What's the guy that wrote Barn Burner, Barn Burning? No idea. Southern Gothic author. Oh, crap. Trying to be like really urbane and erudite, and I just I missed like that word. Mark. I've always been a fan of that word. That's a good just word. punch myself in the crotch. Uh, Faulkner, thank Give you. Give me punch. And you know, he, 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 when you get to 45 to 50 to 60, more often than not, you have failed the Faulkner test where okay. you can't self edit you can't scale you can't kill your children well and... yeah this is a, this is real interesting so i have interviewed baroness twice i've interviewed john and i've interviewed gina and i interviewed gina for this record mm -hmm. and so john is a very heady guy his brain is at is atmospheric his brain is 3d like I said, I said many times, this guy is playing chess and we're all playing tiddlywinks. He really is operating on an intellectual level. The rest of us are not. Um, being a music, a musician, a writer, and a composer, and a visual and graphic artist, a painter, all these different disciplines, right? And so right. we don't have to know why his motivations are. And I feel lucky that we lived in the time of this band. Completely so, agree. They put their record out in 2019. What happens in early 2020? Uh, the pandemic. So they the XFL season 2.0 got ruined. No, they. My mother died. They. I'm sorry. They started yeah, touring. I'm sorry. I. I'm. Deeply I'm sorry. sorry. That's my fault. I apologize. No, it's okay. It would no, have no, just no. been my brother who died. Would have just been his. Let's have frownies at the end of oh. the show. My brother would have been 52 uh, this week. And uh, died 20 years ago this year. So, like, yeah, it's you know, life is hard. Saw and, that. Um, big hugs. Big hugs. Yeah, big yeah. It's hugs. all good. We're good. We're good. So, a lot of beer and crying. So. The best kind. The, so, they, the pandemic kills kills off their headline. Everything. Tour. Kills everything. Kills everything. But kills their, they're literally go on tour when, the, when they drive home from whatever. I might have even been in Europe or something. And they were, like, stuck there for a minute. So they were one of the first bands to come back after things started to open up again. And what they did was little hundred person acoustic shows or a acoustic slash electric shows. Very intimate. Everybody's got to be vaxxed. People were completely. 
they, they charged a lot of money because it was these tiny shows and they felt like, oh, we're going to put ourselves at risk. No more meet and greet, no more sound check. Right, right. No merch, I think, even the very little merch, which is a shame because their merch game is always dope. Like, you know, anything else they do. And so um, they slowly come back. And actually now, two years later, they're back to like full headline tours with big rooms. But like they had been, they did like a year straight of these intimate little shows. They did a live stream that was really great where they played like an hour and did like a little bit from every album. And I am super excited to see them again. I, yeah, I, I cannot am wait for I, them to come back I to town. interviewed Gina for that live stream thing. So basically still promoting a year into the new album. And two three, two almost three years ago, they had been they had like 30 songs written back then for this next record that is basically recorded and ready to come out later this year. The sixth record, the sixth full length record. But Should they, we revisit? Who knows how many like how many songs they have to whittle down through that they had written. Basically, they were getting together when they couldn't tour anymore. They would get together on Zoom and just have songwriting sessions, the whole band. Right. So, wow. Imagine what they will come out with. Probably a double album, I'm guessing, again. Um, well, I mean, they're, they're... I don't know where they're going to go visually or graphically. They are. They are. Um, but they've already done Gold and Gray, so I wonder where they're going to go next. They've kind of did, did the color wheel. But uh, we'll see what they do next, maybe when the new record comes out. I'm hoping later this year we will do black and silver. Perhaps we we could we'll do a a a, a review a live review. Um, Fair I have enough. no Let more us... notes on this band, but if you All want right. to sum it up, no, 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 we're not there yet. Oh, he has more. So this record I would put as an A tier. So we have so if I'm doing my 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 list, it goes yellow and green. Can Gold I ask you gray. one question? So you said A. Do you have S above A? Like S yeah, is yeah, superior? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So superior they, they don't a, have an S tier record for me. Oh no. For me. That's no, no, no. S tier record oh, to clarify. An S tier record for me is the wall. Is Dark Side of the Moon. Is no Metallica record. You have got to be 110% A to Z. No, no dull. And they don't, they don't, I love them. My money's up there. I've given it to them. They, they don't have that. We, we've discussed it. So for me, they have a lot of A tier, a lot of B tier, no S tier records. But S tier records are A pluses for me. It's 99 out of 100. It's, it's very rare. So it, it, that's not to be pedantic. It's not to be shallow. So we're so, so so go ahead, go down your rundown. I'll do mine. So for me, it's uh it's yellow and green, gold and gray, purple, blue, red. So it's largely largely they in, in my brain they get better on the weekly uh, on, on each on each album they've improved from the the one previous. The only difference is, you know, yellow and green is better than purple to me. Although purple is a lot better than I remembered. All right. Uh, I'm going to do this. First of all, Baroness absolutely, in my opinion, has a wall, a dark side of the moon, a crack the sky, a master of puppets. Those are all 10 of 10s. Blue and purple are 10 of 10s. I, I personally love purple a little bit more. Blue was first and is a little heavier if you like the metals, but they're both, to me, flawless, perfect, uh, unapproachable records. Fair then, then I'm going to say, honestly, Golden Gray is third. Pretty damn red, good. Red is four, and yellow and green, as much as I love them, and arguably March to the Sea is their best song. Arguably their best song. Throw uh, My Bones Away? Oh, Throw Cocanium? My Bones Away and March to the Sea, but I think that the softness of green, which we uncovered listening back to it, we skipped yeah. like half a green. We were like, these songs are not good, and that's why they were you know, accused of having... Look, I don't want to agree with you. You don't have to. You don't have. I know. No. Listen, you. Well, let's say this: like purple is particularly meaningful to me, on top of the fact that it's brilliant. Yellow and green. Is I particularly... don't want to agree, but I do. Yeah. Well, yellow and green is. Don't change your vote. Yellow and green is particularly my meaningful vote. to you because of what it meant to you, and that should not change based on our series. 
So uh, again, I will say purple, blue, golden, gray, red, yellow, green for me. But I will say those two songs on yellow are two of their best songs. Far and away, their best songs. Well, I mean, yellow and green is a gr- if they had made yellow and green as long as golden gray, probably the best three sided record ever to exist. Hmm. However, it's four sided. That green, it's got some softies on there for me. That I well, I mean, it's the same in Golden Gray when they go when when they self edit. Yeah, they're. I mean, yellow and green is still I, my personal. I favorite. might probably take red over Golden Gray now that I think about it, because again, I, it's just heavier and probably all right, just stronger. All right, all right, all right. But all right, well, we, that's okay. our series. We did all that is a series. That's ex, that was exhausting. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. To subject you to the, how so long. next week is uh Pink Floyd. We're I'm gonna do Metallica. Dark Side of the well, it's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a slowish puffy kind of couple of weeks. We're gonna drop the uh, Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon live review because we just can't stop ourselves. And no, should both, be. no should no, be. and you know what? This is a labor of love, it's not a labor of money, so we should do what we love. And we both, I want to yell at Keithy about that record. Great. Uh, and then we're going to do the new Metallica back to back. So we're going to do two. Because we love Metallica. We, we just can't Metallica. stop. And, we can't and stop. when else will we get to do another new Metallica record? Maybe never. So, it's honestly, probably our last one. And then we are going to get onto our next series, which I believe we have announced. If we have not, I will announce it again. Now we are going to do Def Leppard, the first four records. So we're going to give you a month of our favorite gentleman from Sheffield, England. Indeed. Great work. I have no other notes, sir. Whose turn is it to take us home? No notes. I'll take us home. Thank you very much, Keefe. Without Keefe, this is just me ranting at the moon. No one needs that. Uh, My wife would have divorced me if that's all this was. So thank you very much. Thank you for our listeners. If you can give us a like, you are amazing. If you subscribe, I will give you a handshake in whatever city you happen to be in where I am at the exact same time as that without prearranging it. But thank you very much for listening. If you are still here, you are wonderfully disturbed as we are. And the delightfully disturbed, the delightfully broken, that is for whom we make these episodes. And the normies, if they can get through 28 minutes, they can't. But thank you very much for checking us out. This is the Glacier Musical Podcast. It does not play in Peoria. <laughs>